Good day guys, welcome back. So I'm gonna be pretty tough on Endurus tonight. And quite frankly, I'm a fan of Fiji Endurus. I watched every game, every minute of the Endurus Super Rugby games since 2021. And never in my life have I imagined something so disgraceful to be on display in a game of rugby. And quite frankly, the players that are involved in this match let down the fans let down the people of Fiji and should be absolutely disgraced, probably banned from the game of rugby for good. I know, I know some of you guys who are dedicated Fijian fans are going to say the referee decisions on some of those scrum calls was very, very tough and was probably not right. But in the game of rugby, it's just not excusable to hit, elbow somebody on the back of the head to hit by somebody, it's just not excusable. That is just not rugby. That is not in the spirit of any fair sport. You know what? What, what Frank Lamani did, striking elbow to somebody on the back of the head, is not even allowed in the UFC. Yes, if this was a UFC fight, Frank Lamani would have been disqualified. For two reasons. In the UFC, Striking back of someone's head is already a disqualifiable offense. This move, elbow downwards, is also not allowed in the UFC on any part of the human body. A downward elbow strike is actually a banned move in the UFC. In addition, hitting someone on the back of the head is literally one of the most dangerous places you can hit somebody. Have you ever heard of people getting killed with one punch? You know how people die from that? They fall over, hit their head on the back of the ground, and they die. That is why this move is gonna... If he did this in the UFC, Frank Lamarty would have been banned. And I, I never could have imagined to see something like this on a rugby field. Number two, there was another red card committed by Joan Kuroi Dua Dua. Like I said, he plays a reserve prop. Some of the course was very tough for Frank Murphy, uh, by, uh, by Damon Murphy, not Frank Murphy, Damon Murphy. I understand that. I can feel the frustration. But there's no, absolutely no excuse for headbutting the opposition prop in the scrum. And he was already off his head. Before the headbutt, as shown here, a lay shot on Carter Gordon was nowhere near the ball. No attempt to wrap, just free shot. That should have been sent off already. Referee gave him another chance. A few minutes later, pushes the halfback without the ball. And then sure enough, he just couldn't handle it. Goes for the headbutt in the scrum. Absolute disgraceful. And I've seen some pretty disgraceful things in my life. And I've never seen something this fucking bad. I've seen Skulk Burger eye gouge somebody. I remember seeing back his boy Todd. Headbutting Jimmy Cowan on the ground. That was pretty bad. But I've never seen something like this. Two players, two red cards for striking. In two different incidents. The players need to take a hard good look at themselves. Because the first half, in my notes, I actually wrote the Fijian Endurers look like a test match team out there. It looked so good. The breakdowns were so fast. The handling was smooth. So much energy, so much speed. And the Rebels just looked like they were down and out. Looked like they were going to blow out the Rebels 40 points to 6 or something. Defended well. Only for the team to completely go down the lane of disgrace. Absolute fucking disgrace. In the second half. And yes, these are red, these are not 20 minute red cards. These are full on red cards off the field, no replacements. Absolute disgraceful. I never had imagined. Someone to see this 
a fucking downward elbow, elbow to, on the back of somebody's head in the game of rugby. Something that is so dangerous, it's banned in the UFC. Unbelievable. And this was a great game of rugby too. The Rebels played with guts. I was very happy for the performance of the Rebels tonight. Really, I just, the Rebels deserved a round of applause for their performance tonight. Not just because they won the game. But through all of that bullshit, the Rebels did not lose their composure. Did not throw a punch in retaliation. They kept their cool. You can see that the players are flaring up, throwing the ball around. They managed to not cross the line. And the Rebels, I was very, very pleased with their performance. Even in the first half, they were under the pumps. And they did not go for the easy three points. They tested the Juros defense. They tested their morse with guts. Something that we haven't seen for so long. For many years, it was just a chicken shit performance from the Rebels. Take three points. Oh my god. Nope. They went for the tries. They showed some guts. They didn't succeed. Carter Gordon kicked the ball out on a five meter trying to find uh, at the touchline when he was five meters out. Five minutes from the try line. And he tried to find touch and he missed the touch. Missed, and he kicked the ball out dead. That still didn't deter the Rebels. They went for it. And sure enough, the compounding efforts throughout a whole 80 minutes of not just going for the soft option yielded good results. Yielded later a very, very good second half performance and the Endurers fell apart. And all of that was built on the back of a very, very good Melbourne Rebels scrum. Yes, the Rebels scrum was dominant throughout the whole game. And that's what happens. If your team has a dominance in the scrum, it puts in the minds of the referee and when it comes to those 50... 50 calls, early engagement, who's at fault? Well, the Rebels had a dominant scrum for the entire game. Penalty to the Rebels. That's just how it works. Yes, I agree. It's frustrating and some of those calls are probably wrong. It's 50-50 calls. But that's just how it is. The referee has been... The, the Rebels have successfully got that message to the referee's mind that they have the dominance in the scrummaging. And they get the 50-50 calls. Very impressive. Especially in second half when Tupo came on. Tupo time. I have not been this excited watching Tupo play for a very, very, for, for, for a very long time. Probably a year. When he was still at the Reds was the last time I was excited seeing Tupo play. Crashing the ball through defense. And just big, big fucking scrums. Beautiful. Beautiful performance. He did really well last week already. But this week, just backed up his performance once again. The consistency that is lacking is starting to come back. I'm very happy for him. And that's, that's what we want. That's what I want from the Rebels. And it was good. Very good. Um, yeah, Carter Gordon had a few shocking kicks. Put himself together. Finished strong. Kicked the balls from the sideline. And that's what we want. That's what we look for in a Wallabies jersey. Someone that can fight through the adversity. And the Rebels shot that tonight. And they did this against the Western Force as well in the first round. But they, this was much more, you know, I think this was a much more comprehensive performance than their first round performance over the, the Western Force. They really came out, came back hard in the second half. I built on that momentum they had. And they just never relented. So really well done. This was really probably the best performance from the Rebels in the last four years at least. Very, very well done. With that being said, let's have a look at the match stats. Six tries to three for the Rebels. Run meters are pretty similar. Like the Duras was, like I said, when they had the ball, looked dangerous. 458 to 450 run meters, equaling run meters. Carries are pretty similar as well. 110 to 112. 18 turnovers conceded against the Rebels. Uh, the first half, like I said, the Endurers, I thought was looked like an international test team out there. Like, the breakdown was sublime. Handling was sublime. Kicking game was good. 
only thing that they were struggling was the scrummaging, but they were able to just play that style of Fijian rugby to their advantage and really just did that little things well, getting themselves quite comfortably lead at half time. 15 turnovers conceded for the Rebels, uh, for the Endurers. Like I said, Rebels, 146 tackles, 35 missed tackles. On the high end by the Endurers, even worse. This really fell off a cliff in the second half. 93 tackles made, 30 missed tackles. Kicks in play, 20 for the Rebels, 12 for the Endurers. Uh, Armstrong missed a few goals as well. Like his goal kicking has been very steady. And two out of five tonight. Pretty poor performance from him. Had a bit of an off day. Two miss for Carter Gordon. Uh, really impressive that he put himself back together. Bit of a slump early in the game. And uh, it's good to see that he was able to get himself back. 15 lineups for the Rebels. One loss. Seven lineups for the, for the Endurers. Two lost. Scrum. Like I said, even though they said that zero scrums lost, the Rebels had multiple scrum penalties. And there were some that was pretty just like early engagements, collapsing the scrum. And obviously when Tupo came on and, you know, late in the first, uh, late in the, in, the, in, the, in the first half as well, some just clear dominance, marching the scrum down, getting those penalties. Very, very impressive. And finally, this is probably where the Rebels actually won the game. Only five penalties conceded. Is that even right? Five penalties conceded for the Rebels. Five penalties conceded for the Rebels. That's probably the best discipline I've ever seen out of the Melbourne Rebels. 13 against the Endurers. Again, 13... You know, 13... Uh, 13 penalties is really not game-ending number. It's the two red cards. Frank Lomani striking somebody with an elbow whilst the Endurers was coming back with a bit of momentum in the second half. Really just set the team off the rails. And then... Kuroi Dura Dura, the headbutt, should have been sent off earlier for the late hit on Carter Gordon. Boy, that was bad. There was one yellow card against the, the Endurers for a high shot. I thought that was Carter Gordon slipped into it. I thought that probably just a penalty. It was probably a little bit tough there. Probably should have been just a penalty. But yeah, disgraceful. Absolutely fucking disgraceful. Anyway. Let's talk about the tries and finish off this review. Um, the one minute in the game, the Endurers looked like they scored a try. There was a bit of a loose ball midfield. And in Canterbury, I think he was, scooped up the ball, ran down the field. Looked like he was scoring. Referee looked at it. There was a knock on in the tackle. No try. And it took um, nine minutes. Sorry, seven minutes in the game. There was a penalty for the for the Endurers. They decided to go for the penalty. This was pretty far out, a big angle, missed. Eight minutes in the game, another penalty for the for the Endurers. This time right in front of the goalpost. They take in the three. Three points to nil. Nine minutes in the game. Um, ten minutes in the game, the Rebels had their own penalties. Like I said, they did not take the three. You know, they really just really good fucking rugby from the Rebels, man. Like that was fucking good. Uh, they went for the line out. They went for the drive. They got really close. Uh, well, I think the player tried to reach out and it was knocked on. But the, the, the key here is they tried. And then they went multiple times doing this repeated penalties. And finally, 13 minutes into the game, they went for... Uh, there was another penalty right in front of the goalpost. Three, five minutes out. They went for the line out and Carter Gordon kicked the ball dead. Even that... I did not blame Carter Gordon. I was like, at least you tried. Okay, at least you fucking tried. You'd kick the boy out dead. No problem. At least you fucking tried. You didn't just take the three points uh, and, then, and then just take try to try to milk out an easy win. And that was I was I was not upset at all, despite the fact that it was a really amateur error from Carter Gordon. 40 minutes into the game, the game got worse for the Rebels. Jurat um had a 22 meter dropout from this dead ball kicking dead. Tap, short tap for Armstrong uh, Ravula. It's a bit of offloading from the Endura. Quickly ran down the field. Got into the Rebels 50. And then there was a penalty. Frank Lomani took a quick tap. Got about five meters short. Crash ball, crash ball. And then ball went out wide. Absolute magic. Um, Lomani eventually got close. Sorry, everybody got close. 
Romani eventually picked and got himself. Try time for the rep uh, for the jurors. Ten points to nil. Sorry, eight points to nil for the for the for the juror. Ninety minutes into the game, the rebels get a scrum penalty, and finally the rebels are like, okay, we're gonna have to steady this, the ship a bit. We we'll tried, we time to take some points. Three, it's, we're getting a bit frustrated. Let's take the point and just settle the nerves a bit, which I completely fine with this. Three points to eight, the rebels came back. Twenty-two minutes into the game, uh, the juror again looking like a international test match, just building, building, building. Uh, the Rebels almost in intercepted the ball on the right-hand side, five meters from the try line, only to throw the ball back into the into the juror's hand. And the jurors just spread the ball back out to the left-hand side, try into the corner. Uh, Volta went in for the second try for the, for the juror. 13 points to the three. 28 minutes into the game. Uh, a scrum penalty for the Rebels once again. They did not take the three this time. Went for the more. And then nice little dart, short ball. Uh, quick pick and go, try time, and um, 8 points to 13 for the Rebels coming back. 32 minutes into the game, the um, the, uh, oh yeah, yeah, 32 minutes again, the, the Jurors building into the Rebels 22, lots of uh, phases built in front of the try line, penalty advantage, uh, eventually the Jurors went back for the penalty, they took a tap, Crash ball, crash ball, and try time. Rotui saw Leah 32 minutes into the game, 20 points to eight, and it's looking pretty bad. Um, 35 minutes in the game, there was a shoulder charge on um there was a shoulder charge on one of the rep on the one of the rebels players so from the uh, the one the injurious player kind of showed you shoulder charge one of the rebels players out on the sideline. Um he yeah, it was just, he didn't, the ball was nowhere near the player. Probably should have been a penalty. Damon Murphy said, that's fine. I was like, you know, I thought I should have been a penalty, but whatever. 39 minutes into the game, just before halftime, the Rebels really wanted to get some points on the ball before halftime. Again, showed a lot of guts. I was very, very happy. That got me very excited here. Uh, they won for the penalty. They won for the line out. And there was a, so Corden kicked the ball out for the line out. And then referee to call him. The referee won the TMO review and issued a yellow card for um, who was it for for a like a high shot on Carter Gordon. And Carter Gordon had to take the five meter line out kick again, uh, which was really you know considering that he kicked the ball dead earlier, which was really like a like a massive you know uh, was a massive you know clutch moment. I guess could have messed that up, but now nah, he got this one through. So the Rebels won for the line out, won for the more with a play in the bin. For the Endurers, Jordan, Ulessi, Dummy, and Go. Big leg drive, drive time. 15 points to 20 at halftime. Second half starts, kickoff. Right away, there was a penalty on the... The Rebels got a penalty at the breakdown. And they decided to go for the line out. Didn't take the three. Line out, they went for the more. Uh, and then they just kept the ball pressure on. Eventually, the ball came out. And uh, Carter Gordon, nice little pass to... Vaihu, try time for the Rebels. 22 points to 20, and the Rebels get themselves in front. Yeah, gutsy play. Could have taken the three, but no, they won for the try. 45 minutes into the game, another penalty for the Rebels. Again, rinse and repeat, one for the line out, one for the more. Easy as that. Try time, 29 points to 20. Um, there was 50 minutes into the game, there was a nice little grabber behind from the Rebels, and it looked like Dalguna had grounded the ball the same time as Frank Lamani. But uh, the referee didn't even bother looking at it. I thought Dangunu probably had that one, but that's fine with me. Uh, I thought it was like both players probably had their hand on the ball at the same time. 52 minutes into the game is Tupo time. Tanela Tupo had the ball and he punched himself straight through. It just came on the field, fresh legs. And man, he almost scored five minutes short. And uh, he uh, and then the ball just came out. Quick ball came out. Just a little cardio pass from Gordon to Vaihu into the corner. 34 points to 20. 58 minutes, Lomani, elbow to the head. Red card straight off, no replacement. Um, 68 minutes into the game, there was a turnover by the Rebels. And Del there was a little pass to Dalgunu down the sideline. He slipped, catching this ball. And uh, the defender from the Indura was up on his face, also slipped. And then Dalgunu just got up and started running down the sideline. Uh, he looked like he was tackled, just short of trying, but he slides himself through. And put the ball down. He looked like he knocked the ball on, but 
the current law is that the ball has to show, like, actually show separation from his hand. Uh, from the replays, I couldn't see the separation. Yes, he did lose control of the ball, but there was no actual separation in the hand. So try stands, 41 points to 20. Like I said, you know, the they try to not show re replay, so I have to actually watch this myself on replay. But um, they really should just, like, show everyone the replay and let the fans know whether or not this was scored because, like, this is not a good experience for the fans. Leaving the fans guessing whether that was a try or not uh, by not showing the replay because let's speed the game up. I thought they need to rethink about that when it comes to, you know, replays for try scoring. There's a reason, you know, why they have these TMO decisions and people, you know, they have, you know, KFC sponsoring the decision, TMO decisions on the big screen. It's because fans look like this, because fans like looking at this. Fans love waiting for the decision and watch the replay and try to figure out whether to try scored or not and try to figure out if the TMO is going to make the same decision as they have. It's fun. For some reason, the people at Super Rugby think that's a waste of time and shouldn't be bothered. And again, I have to, again, this was one of those moments they should have shot a replay, should have get the TMO to take in the time, have a look at it. Bit of a joke. Anyway, um, there was 73 minutes in the game. Tupo time is scrummaging, just absolutely dominating from Tenella Tupo. And uh, yeah, what's his name? Kuroi Jura Jura headbutts in the scrum, sent off, red card, and uh, disgraceful. I think both players will be getting pretty long suspensions, probably six to eight weeks, maybe more. And um, probably a foul fine as well, because that's just absolutely disgraceful behavior. So yeah, that's the end of the game, pretty much. Not much else to talk about. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate anyone watching this video. Let me know your thoughts about this game. And um, yeah, have a good week. Cheers.